Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1070. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about are we in a recession or are we not? Because that was the debate that was sparked last week when we had two negative quarters of GDP that were consecutive. Now, this has been the definition of a recession, but as I said in Friday's podcast, the official decision maker of whether we're in a recession or not has always been the National Bureau of Economic Research's, or NBER, Business Cycle Dating Committee. Yes, that's the full name of who makes the decision whether or not we're officially in a recession. It's a committee of eight members in the U.S., and they all work at institutions that are prestigious academic institutions, like UC Berkeley, UC California, San Diego, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, Northwestern, Stanford. This is a committee of economists that sit down and decide whether or not we really are in a recession. How do they do that? Well, first, let's look at what their definition of a recession is. It's a significant decline in economic activity that is spread across the economy and lasts more than a few months. So they look at things like the duration of the decline, the diffusion, the depth, And they can look at many different indicators to determine whether the economy's in a recession. Now, they did determine the last recession was in 2020, starting in April, and that it concluded in July, which made it the shortest record of a recession in U.S. history. But people familiar with the committee and their work say that the pronouncement on the current recession, whether or not we have a recession, won't come from the committee until likely 2023. That's because the NBER usually doesn't make the designation until after a year. And that's because they're looking at all the data and they want to be certain because some of the data does get revised. It can be revised upward or lower. And so they're going to look at what are the revised numbers and then make the final determination. And already they're saying it's possible that the 0.9% contraction of the economy in the second quarter could be revised. And that's small enough to fit into a typical margin of error, which might throw it out of being negative and might mean that we're not in a recession. So we have to see after the numbers have been revised. So while all of that debate is going on in the background, what is the Fed actually saying? They're actually saying it doesn't matter whether we're in a recession or not, because what really matters is the inflation that's happening and that we get inflation under control. As we know, last month, inflation was at 9.1% from a year ago, and that was a four decade record high. But we also had a very strong labor market and non-farm payrolls were up 372,000 in the last month, but coincided with a low unemployment rate of 3.6% nationally. According to Neil Kashkari from the Federal Reserve, He said typically recessions demonstrate high job losses, high unemployment. Those are terrible for American families, and we're not seeing anything like that, he said. He went on to say that the problem is that even in a strong job market, inflation is outpacing wage growth, giving many Americans a functional wage cut as living costs increase nationwide. Solving that problem by reducing inflation is the Federal Reserve's top goal right now. Whether we are technically in a recession or not doesn't change the fact that the Federal Reserve has its own work to do and we are committed to doing it, he said. He also pointed out that a slowdown of gross domestic product for the second quarter could be a good thing. An economic slowdown could help reduce inflation to the point where it no longer outpaces wage growth. 
He said, we definitely want to see some slowing of economic growth. We don't want to see the economy overheating. We would love it if we could transition to a sustainable economy without tipping the economy into recession. But doing so poses a significant challenge, he acknowledged. And economic slowdowns tend to be very difficult to control, especially if it's the central bank that's inducing the slowdown. But, he said, the bank will do whatever is necessary to tame inflation. Quote, we're going to do everything we can to avoid a recession, but we are committed to bringing inflation down, and we are going to do what we need to do. We are a long way from achieving an economy that is back at 2% inflation, and that's where we need to go. End quote. So there you have it. We're not officially in a recession. We're unofficially in a recession because we have two quarters of negative GDP back to back. However, because it could be revised in the future, it may not officially be a real recession. And we'll find out officially from the committee that actually makes the determination probably in 2023. So what do we do now? We just keep going and we look at what the Fed said at their last meeting, which sounds like they're getting a little bit softer on inflation. A lot of us felt that was a Fed pivot, which we were looking for which means that the Fed is not going to be jawboning interest rates up as strongly as they have in the past. And because they're not meeting in August, it's going to give us a little bit of leeway until September for interest rates to trend lower, which is exactly what they're doing. And the stock market is loving it and is responding really well to that. So we're seeing an incredible rally in stocks. That rip-roaring bull market that I suggested was coming is underway. And what we actually saw in July was Wall Street's best monthly performance this year. The Dow is up 6.7% in July, its biggest monthly gain since November of 2020. The S&P 500 up 9.1% in July, its biggest monthly gain since November of 2020. And NASDAQ is up 12.3% in July, its biggest monthly gain since April of 2020. So all three, the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ had massive gains. And particularly the NASDAQ up 12.3% is leading which is what I said I believed would happen because that's where the higher growth stocks are. And for those of you who upgraded, invested in companies with strong earnings, who are still looking incredibly profitable, whose sales have held up, their prices have come down dramatically, so they are at bargain basement prices. But that's exactly when you want to take advantage and upgrade your portfolio. I believe that this rally is going to continue into September and we're going to make up a lot of the losses that we saw this year. So you're going to want to stay invested, upgrade your portfolio and take advantage of that. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as my podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. Many more than you can get on Apple or Spotify. And any topic that you can think of is available to you. So you can get to financial freedom faster. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.